Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and tonight I'm going to show you how to cook jasmine rice. Now jasmine rice is an actual variety of rice that you're actually going to purchase at the store. It's going to say jasmine rice on it, okay? Some jasmines, they're even basmati and stuff like that, they have a jasmine essence enhanced with jasmine smell or something like that. But this is called a premium jasmine rice. This is a re this actual brand is called Red Horse Premium Jasmine Rice. Make sure you check out my review on that. If you have not already seen it. Okay, so I'm measuring out two and a half cups of this rice. And I'll put this away for right now. The reason I have this mesh strainer out here um, is because you need to rinse this rice under cold water. If you don't, you're gonna leave these things called saponins on there. And the saponins are what makes rice gunky and mushy and all kind of glumpy and you know, all those yucky words. Okay, what you need to do is rinse it under cold water and get all that stuff off the outside. Now, if you don't have a mesh strainer, you really need to get one for your kitchen. You're gonna like it, you're gonna use it for all kinds of things. Check them out at shop.cookingwithkimberly.com in our store. So in order, I'm, I can't, I'm not gonna bring you to the sink today, so I'm gonna show you what the method is. Now, you're gonna use your hand and you're just going to, in a circular motion, rub the rice against the mesh strainer under the cold water while it's rinsing it. And you're gonna keep going until your arm is completely tired or, and or, the water that comes out runs clear. It's no longer cloudy, okay? You're gonna actually be able to see that. Now, you can also do it other ways, but that's how I do it, it's the best way to do it. I probably rinse the rice for a good one or two minutes underneath the uh, water, okay? I seriously rinse it. So this particular rice takes one and a half times more liquid as it does to rice. So use however much you want for your rice cooker or your stove top or how much you need for dinner. And that's that. So I'm gonna measure out my, my water and I'm gonna rinse this off and bring it back here and you're gonna see me then. Okay, I'm getting my rice cooker prepared. I'm just going to assemble everything in here. That's wonderful, I have a little um, pot that goes inside and inlet thing. All right, so in goes my rinsed rice. Now I typically like to use butter and I'm going to use just a tiny, tiny bit. That's probably like a half a teaspoon, okay? But I'm also going to use a little bit of the pork fat that we rendered from our gorgeous pork loin roast that we made uh, a couple days ago. I've been keeping in the fridge for such a time as this. So this is your oil or your grease that you're gonna put in here and it's got extra flavor. So consider keeping your drippings. Don't throw them out, okay? What's better than drippings in your on top of your rice or your potatoes? Well, this is just preparing it with it already. How cool is that? So I'm gonna, probably gonna put, I don't know, another teaspoon and a half of that for all of my, my rice, okay? And into there is gonna go my measured out liquid. I have probably half chicken broth and half water. Now, you can use all water, all chicken broth, any other kind of liquid you want that you really are feeling, okay? Go ahead, experiment, you're gonna like it. Uh, but chicken broth, I find, brings a really nice flavor in there. Just a little bit extra flavor, okay, than just typical water. And it goes into the rice cooker. I'm going to put, I don't know, maybe six peppercorns, black peppercorns, whole ones. I like that. And I'm going to put just a little bit of red chili flake, just because that's what I like. Okay. Now, I need to put a little bit of salt in here. I did use a reduced sodium chicken broth because I like to control the amount of salt I put in and that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just going to put a little bit in, I don't know, maybe three quarters of a teaspoon, maybe. And I'm going to stir it all up, close it up, set it on cook, and it's going to be ready in probably 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, my rice is done. It was done in about 20 something minutes and I'm just going to use a nice paddle or a light, nice uh, fork to uh, just fluff everything up a little bit. My mom used, likes to use a fork, I like to use this little paddle, so to each his own. All right, now we're just gonna serve this alongside our chicken and our asparagus that I'm about to take out of the oven that you're not gonna see. Make sure you check out the recipes for the Perfect Taste Satay chicken thighs that were grilled and my grilled lemon zest asparagus with verjus. Beautiful stuff, okay? So I'm gonna leave that because we're about to eat. Let me try a little bit for you. Look at how gorgeous the rice turns out. It's light, it has, still has its integrity. It hasn't all turned into, you know, mush and stuff like that. Let's see. Mm, still has a nice bite. Perfectly done. Rice cooker is a serious, serious time and effort saver, okay? Beautiful, I can't wait to eat. Mm. All right, 
a little bit of chicken broth really helps it out a lot. You don't just need a little bit. Anyhow, that's how you uh, make a jasmine rice in a rice cooker. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on iFood.tv slash Cooking with Kimberly and YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. And my site is CookingWithKimberly.com. That's it. That's all. Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously.